them saying, quote, we cannot take it anymore. We're exhausted. We are all victims here, martyrs, and we are leaving one after the other. Well, for more on the situation for journalists on the ground, I've been speaking to the president of the Committee to Protect Journalists, Jody Ginsburg. To begin with, sketch out the level of danger for journalists operating in Gaza right now. The level of danger for journalists operating in Gaza right now is absolutely unprecedented. This is the most dangerous conflict for journalists that the Committee to Protect Journalists has ever documented. And we've been recording and documenting attacks against journalists for more than 30 years. 36 journalists have been killed in the past four weeks. And to put that in kind of context for you, last year we uh, documented 68 journalists and media workers killed worldwide over the space of 12 months and 36 have died just in four weeks, just in Israel and Gaza. Jody, why do you think so many of them have been killed? Well, no international crews are able to get into Gaza. The only people able to report from Gaza are Gazan journalists and there is literally nowhere in Gaza currently that is safe. We've seen hospitals bombed, we've seen schools uh, uh, under attack and journalists are civilians so they can face the same risks that any civilian is currently risking and they're also trying to document and cover what's going on so they tend to be at places like hospitals where the injured are being brought and so on or they tend to be filming convoys and and there's nowhere for them to be safe like any civilian in Gaza at the moment. Uh, we've also seen a strike on a building used by AFP in Gaza. With strikes on infrastructure, how difficult does that also make continuing to do journalism, to get information out? It makes it extremely difficult. We've seen buildings that house media facilities uh, have come under attack. We've seen, um, obviously, communications blackouts, as we saw last week, where it was impossible for anything, any communication to get out. And that makes it extremely difficult. On top of that, of course, you have fuel shortages, food shortages, water shortages. That makes it, again, very difficult for journalists to operate. They need to get about, and it makes that extremely hard. And what we've seen as well, of course, is that this also means that journalists are losing their colleagues. And I just wonder what the impact of that is as well. This must be incredibly traumatic. It's devastating. We've seen a number of colleagues, a number of journalists reporting live on air the deaths of their own colleagues. We've seen uh, journalists reporting on the deaths of their own families, having to go into the hospital uh, as journalists and their press insignia and report on the deaths of, of loved ones is incredibly traumatic. With all of this in mind, with this number of journalists that have been killed in this conflict, what does this mean in terms of getting information to civilians in Gaza and getting information out as well? It makes it extremely challenging, but it's nevertheless absolutely vital. As I said, there are no international crews that are currently able to operate in Gaza. And so we're absolutely reliant on local Palestinian journalists to document what is happening, to be our eyes and ears. It's extremely challenging, but they continue to do so. They continue to report because so many of them believe it's absolutely vital. Their role is vital in this war to let people know what's happening outside of Gaza. And just finally, Jody, what needs to be done to protect journalists? As I said, journalists are civilians, so uh, it's very important that they're treated as such, that um, we don't continue to see the kinds of indiscriminate bombings and attacks that have swept so many civilians up into this conflict. We know from the United Nations and others that that is in breach of international humanitarian law. Uh, and we need to see um, more vocal support for that.